Hi everybody, my name is Guksa. I've completed three years of the computer science program at Western University and I am currently on an internship, so next September will be my fourth year. I chose computer science at Western um, because I had taken some computer science courses in grade 11 and 12 and even though I was never really into computers, the courses were pretty enjoyable and I had heard that there's a lot of job opportunities in that field. So I decided that's what I wanted to do. And on top of that, I didn't even know what I was planning on doing in university. So that kind of really geared me towards this. I chose Western specifically because I didn't get into Waterloo. I wanted to do the double degree of business and computer science at Waterloo and Laurier. But I chose Western because they had a similar option where you do business at the Ivy Business School and then computer science at Western. Uh, the program itself is not extremely overwhelming like some other schools. I know I've seen Waterloo schedules that are like 40 plus hours. Mine in first year was only around 20. That's not to say it doesn't get hard. Second year and third year gets really tough. You'll get loaded with like a lot of assignments. One negative I guess about computer science at Western is that Western is not really known for computer science, but in the computer science industry, at least in Canada, your school doesn't really make a difference unless you go to Waterloo. I would say the culture is pretty competitive, like everyone wants to do the best in the program and a lot of people are kind of anti-social when it comes to schoolwork, like people don't really want to help you, but I was still able to find a group of friends who were within my program and we always work together and study together, so it's not impossible to find people to work with. For like the teaching style, um, it's like lecture and lab based for computer science. Majority of the courses you'll have like uh, labs every week, um, but there's a few upper year courses where it's solely based on theory. I wouldn't say the pace is too fast. It's definitely faster than high school, but it's not at the point where you can't keep up or anything like that. Just make sure you keep up um, week in and week out, because if you fall behind when it comes to exam time, you're gonna really have a difficult time. Um, the good thing about the way you get graded in computer science is that a good portion of your grade is assignments. Most courses will probably be like 30 to 40 percent of assignments and the rest of it is exams. So it's not like your whole grade is riding on two exams all year, whereas it's like that for a lot of other programs. The difference between high school and university exams are that nobody will help you prepare. In high school, your teacher gives you like a review or like what questions to do in the textbook. Most of your profs, profs at most just tell you what concepts are on the exam. The rest is on you to kind of study and figure out. Uh, the exams are usually like multiple choice and true or false to start and then you would have to like write some algorithms uh, for some programming problem except for the theory courses in upper year where it's like you'll get like 10 questions, 5 questions just like solving problems based on concepts you've learned. Uh, the kind of mindset you need is to just stay on track. Don't get distracted by the social life and fall behind. If you keep up with courses, studying for the exams is actually not bad at all. Um, but as courses do get harder, you're gonna need to spend more time trying to grasp concepts. You can't just read it once and think you understand it. You're gonna have to really put in the time to understand. The type of content that's covered in the program, it varies depending on your module, which is like how specific your degree is. I'm doing an honor specialization with a minor in software engineering. So there are a lot of extra courses, particularly software based, that I have to take, whereas someone doing a major wouldn't. First year is the same for everyone though, because you pick your module after you're almost done first year. It's very general for first year comp side. It's 2.0 out of your 5.0 mandatory courses, and then you have 3.0 electives. So, which that's quite a lot. A lot of people don't have that many. And one semester, it means 0.5, whereas a full year is 1.0. And the mandatory courses are just two computer science courses and then two types of math, usually calculus or some type of uh, applied mathematics or something like that. The second year, you learn uh, C, like the language C. There's a lot of algorithms based courses. There's some software engineering courses. And third year and fourth year, it's a lot more theory, but you do have some more freedom with the electives. Like if you want to learn like web development or data science, you would use your electives in upper year to take those kind of courses. Um, to be suitable for computer science, you have to be good at problem solving. Just taking notes and memorizing information isn't gonna cut it. You're gonna, need, you're gonna run into issues every assignment and get stuck, so you need to be patient and know how to solve problems. And you can't be prone to quitting when you get stuck, otherwise you won't be very successful. 
if you're good at math, that's definitely an indicator that uh, this program is suitable for you because you're used to solving problems. Um, and definitely if you took computer science in high school, you'll be extra prepared. To get into the program, it's honestly not that hard. I think the average was like mid to high 80s, but the courses you need to take to get in, it was like advanced functions, calculus, English, and then two sciences. Um, there's no written portion or anything like that uh, to get in, which is cool. I would probably recommend that you shoot for as high of an average as possible. I'm pretty sure you only have like out of your six in grade 12, like one that you can choose from. The rest kind of fall under that list that I just mentioned. So with that, those extra electives or that one extra elective, um, I would say take the easiest courses possible to boost your average. And also I would recommend in high school, try to take courses that are hard in night school and summer school. It's definitely easier than like regular class in day school and your marks tend to be higher. Also, if you need to redo courses to boost your grades up, um, because that's definitely helpful. And most schools, including Western, they don't care where you did your courses or if you redo them. It's the equivalent of taking it in day school. So definitely would recommend that. The scholarships aren't that great if you're not on a need basis. It's like if you're 87 to 89 average, you get like $1,000. If you have 90 to 94, you get 2,000. And then 95 plus, you get um, 10,000 over four years. So 2,500 each year. Any other kind of scholarship though, you would need to show proof of need for the financial aid. I would definitely suggest uh, spending time looking online for what's called the bird course. That's what we call them. They're like the easy mark boosters. Some of the ones I can remember off the top of my head are Computer Science 1033. Um, there's a second year course, it's called Polytainment. I don't remember the course code. Politics of Pop Culture, I don't remember the course code. Um, and then if you're good at math, take Math 1228, Math 1229, and Stats 1024. Um, and like I said, there's definitely a lot more. Um, you just have to look online, Reddit, those type of things, and ask people and you'll be able to find them. I wouldn't say any high school course kind of prepares you for university because uh, in high school, the teachers are very helpful and um, they're very good teachers, whereas profs, whereas profs are more lecturers. They just kind of talk and you have to understand they're not really there to teach uh, lecturing is just part of their job it's harder to get into classes you want in university than in high school the good thing is that if you have an extreme circumstance academic counseling is able is really understanding and they'll be able to help you um, for computer science after first year you really have no choice when your mandatory courses are um, there's only like one time slot for all of those courses but you have you can take your electives whenever you want um, what I did in first year was I made sure I had my Fridays off by putting all my courses Monday to Thursday. Um, and in second and third year, all my mandatory courses were Tuesday to Thursday. So I took some online electives and put the rest Tuesday and Thursday and actually had a four day weekend on Monday to Friday, which was pretty cool. You have that kind of flexibility. Um, the only thing is some courses are only at one time. So if you want to take it, you would have to take it at that time. I wish I realized in first year that I didn't just like try to study for a couple of days before the exam. That definitely doesn't work. You have to spend time over every class going over each concept so that you're familiar. And then once it comes exam time, at the bare minimum, take a week, but even like two weeks in advance is really helpful so that you have enough time to go over anything. And if you're stuck on anything, you can ask your prof or your TAs and they'll be able to help you understand concepts. Uh, for some study tips, definitely find people in your program and make friends with them. Don't go through the whole program alone. It's gonna be way too hard. It's a lot easier having friends to go to for help and manage your time. I wish I did this earlier. I actually started using a calendar recently and I put everything on it, not just school, work stuff, personal stuff, and then I feel more organized and more productive. For me particularly, I'm trying to become a full stack developer. I wanna do both front end and back end of websites and apps. You don't really need grades, um, like in computer science, it's more about your skill set. In interviews, they give you coding problems where you have to solve and explain your logic throughout, and that's really how they assess if you're qualified for your job. The internship I'm doing asked for my transcript, but I, my, God, my grades weren't amazing or anything. I don't think that really had much of an impact. I would say from Western, the kind of jobs you can get are particularly CRA and SAP, like to hire out of Western. Um, and those are more IT based as opposed to computer science. 
but you can honestly get any job like i have a friend who just recently got a full-time job at amazon in computer science here um, i know alumni from western who are working at google so the job pros prospects are really unlimited i would definitely recommend taking an internship like i said a lot of companies don't really care about grades they care about your experience and they see that experience through personal school projects but most importantly job experience so you definitely have a better job a better shot at landing a full-time job out of school with an internship under your belt western has a science internship program where they help science students land eight to 16 month internships it's pretty easy to get in you only need to have a 70 average over your first two years and I am in the program and I'm doing my 12 month internship at this company in London called Art Traction. I believe you should start applying for uh, jobs, full-time jobs about uh, 12 months in advance. Um, usually that's when they kind of have the job postings up, but you can definitely keep applying. Like they'll usually be still be hiring like six to eight months in advance, um, specifically for internships. Um, if you do the science internship program, you would apply, I believe, in second year at, or at the beginning of third year. I don't exactly remember. But then in third year, you using the program, you look through internships. And then if you find one before school starts again, you would start working after. For the university experience, I would definitely say live on campus if you can. It's easy to meet people. We have a really nice campus. Um, it's very large for a Canadian campus and it's easy to get to class, but you're close. The only negative is that if you live on campus, it's expensive, but that's why I said if you can, if it's within your means, definitely live on campus. The res you pick really depends on the experience you want. So if you want to party a lot, definitely pick Soggy in your med sit. Like those are notoriously the ones that are the most like party ones. They're, um, they're pretty fun, like I've been to. I personally, I didn't want to do those reses because the washrooms are shared by floors, so you don't have your own personal one. Um, I was in Perth Hall, it's hybrid style, so I had a roommate and then we had like a suite where we there were two other roommates who had their room and then we all shared a washroom. Um, and there's a res called Ontario Hall, which is the same style as Perth, it's just a bit bigger and a bit nicer. If you're living off campus after first year, you should probably try to sign around February or March, but there's no rush. A lot of people do rush, but I know people who sign in August, like a year in and year out. Um, but definitely in like October or November, try to find your group of friends that you're gonna plan on living with because people start doing that fast and you don't wanna be left with no one to live with. There's definitely a party culture at Western. It's amazing. Like easily the best in Ontario. I've been to McMaster and Laurier and I would definitely say that this is the best one for sure. The fraternities throw great parties um, and even like the, the clubs here, like Lost Love, it's pretty new but easily the top one of the top five clubs I've been to and like I've been to clubs in Canada, America, so it's really fun here if you want to party. This is a great school for that. The areas on campus that are nice, definitely UCC. Um, the spoke's pretty popular Wednesday nights. It's called the Ricks, and there's uh, this guy who like just plays guitar and sings, and like people drink. It's pretty chill. Um, and then to be honest, the gym is really nice. Like whenever I do intramurals, I'm always there. If you just want to work out, it's like super nice, super big. There's a swimming pool, so that's a nice spot as well. Um, there's a lot of clubs you can get into, like soccer clubs, gaming clubs, like ethnic clubs. Like depending on your interests there's gonna be different clubs you wanna join, but there'll definitely be a club for you, no matter what you like. Myself, I wasn't in a fraternity, but I have a bunch of friends who joined and they all liked it. Um, there's like the stereotype that all they do is party, but to be honest, they do like charity stuff in the community, which is nice. And like the frat people I've met, like they're all pretty cool. So if you wanna try it out, definitely go ahead. I personally didn't do exchange, but I kind of wish I did. I have friends who've done it and they told me it's a cool experience. Um, my friend was in England before the pandemic hit, but he said he made a lot of friends, the culture was really nice, and it was cool to experience a different country. To make friends, definitely the res is the best way, without a doubt. You see the same people every day, so you're kind of forced to meet them and get to know them and make friends. You can also make friends in class too, but like it's a lot harder because people aren't as social and open to making friends as they are in res. So. And a lot of off-campus people who aren't on res, like they do have a tough time making friends. So definitely try to be in res if you can, because it's easiest to make friends. For the diversity, I would say um, 
like racially it's predominantly like asian people and white people at western at least from my personal experience and in computer science it's predominantly men um asian and white men um but like it's the the school's diverse in the sense that people come from all over the world like in canada there's a lot of people from alberta there's a lot of people from bc uh, manitoba and then like even outside that there's a lot of people who come from england uh china uh the caribbean and like my roommate in first year was from Hong Kong and we got along really well. So um, like diversity isn't really a problem at Western. There's a lot of resources at your disposal for help. One cool thing about Western that I'm not sure a lot of uh, other schools have is something called self-reported absences where you can postpone some kind of coursework um, for 48 hours for an undisclosed reason. So if there's an emergency or whatever, you can do that. Um, the work has to be like 30% of your grade or less. So if you have like a midterm that's less than that or assignments, you can use it. You have two per semester. So it's, and because it's COVID and the pandemic, I think they gave us actually four. So it is, it is uh, like a very nice thing to have. The Career Center is also helpful in looking for work. And like the internship program I'm in is connected to the careers program as well. And I've been to academic counseling a lot, like if I have exam conflicts or whatever, and they're very helpful as well. There's a lot of clubs geared towards um, like women, LGBTQ, LGBTQ um, ethnic groups. Uh, I, I know specifically when I was in first year, Ontario Hall had like an LGBTQ floor. So the school does have plenty of resources that you need. Um, there's dental and health coverage that you get as part of the university tuition, which is nice. Um, but if you're already covered, it's pretty easy to opt out. You just do it online. Financially, if you're on OSAP or like financial aid, it's not the end of the world if you like build debt. Like if you get a job, uh, you'll be able to pay it off. I would say definitely in the summer, work and save up your money for expenses during the school year. Don't think that because you got into university that you can just graduate and have a job waiting for you. Like it's not that simple. Don't be complacent, especially for computer science. Spend your summers learning new skills, keep up with the new programming languages and frameworks. Um, and that way when you graduate you have all the skills necessary to get a good job. Don't study last minute like I said. Um, seriously, it, it, it's going to save you a lot of painful nights if you um, study ahead of time. Um, so definitely try to avoid that. Most importantly, I would say have fun for sure. I remember a week before my first year, Norm Kelly tweeted that uh, these are the best four years of your life and you're going to miss it. I totally agree. I'm not even done and I already, I already missed the past few years. Like it's so much fun. The experience is great. There's a lot of tough nights and weeks because obviously you're in school, but the great experience, it really makes up for it. So definitely enjoy it. And um, yeah, come to Western. I would definitely say we have like everything you need in the university experience. There's good academics. We have great sports teams. Our football team is always competitive. Recently, our soccer team and basketball team uh, got bronze in OUA. Um, and the culture, like uh, socially, is really nice, partying or just chill vibe. So definitely, I would say Western's a great school to experience university.